Nice. So we're nice. lucky enough right now to have with us from RemotePilot101.com, uh, instructor pilot and uh, eight foot tall, just good dude, uh, Jason Shepard. And uh, he is going to try to help navigate us through all of the confusion that the DJI Mavic Mini has sure. caused. Because people are thinking that this is the outlaw drone oh, and that yeah. you can do anything that you want with it. You don't have to register it. You can fly it at the airport. You can fly it up uh, George Washington's <laughs> nose at Mount Rushmore. You can do anything you want with it. But that's not the case. Is that right? That is, that is not the case. And Ken, I sent you some slides earlier too that I made up just to kind of share with everybody. Yeah. Um, and we can go through that. Um, you know, kind of if you have some of those, where does this fit as a hobbyist? Where does this fit in the Part 107 commercial environment? So looking at the next slide here, Ken, you can see if I went to register this, uh, it says, well, how do I register my unmanned aircraft? We land on the page. It says, well, register it using this website if it weighs more than that 0 0.55, that 250 grams, uh, and less than 55 pounds. So right now the Mavic Mini does not fit in that. Okay, we, we checked that box. Let's dig a little bit deeper here. Mm. Am I gonna operate, let's just say as a hobbyist. So going to the next slide, let's say we wanna use it for hobbyist use under part 101. We look at 101.41, the applicability, and these are the hobbyist rules you are held to. And I kinda wanna just jump ahead to the subparts, the A, B, C, and D, the bullet points you see there. It says the aircraft is flown strictly for hobby or recreational use. It's operated in accordance with any community base or safety guidelines. C is the interesting one. The aircraft is limited to not more than 55 pounds unless certified through design for what they're talking about is greater weight. It then says the aircraft uh, operated in a manner that does not interfere and gives way to manned aircraft. And then E is our five mile from airport rule that we as you know, hobbyists all know and understand. What's so interesting to me about this, and this is 101, this is our rule book here for hobbyists, it doesn't mention a minimum. It only mentions a maximum, that 55 pounds. Mm. So it's a maximum of 55 pounds all the way down and on through. So although you may not have to register you still have to follow the rules as a hobbyist. Right. Let's take it a step further now. So next next few slides here. What does this mean for us in the commercial environment? Well, if you look at the following slide, I pulled up 107.3. That's definitions of what an SUAS actually is. And that's an unmanned aircraft, again, weighing less than 55 pounds. And I like how you said earlier, on takeoff. So that includes our SD cards, our stickers, our prop mm. cards, everything else. So we do need to be mindful of that. But again, part 107 doesn't define a minimum weight. It only defines a maximum. So 55 pounds and lower. Next slide on here talks about registration, 107.13. A person operating a civil small unmanned aircraft system for purposes of flight must comply with the provisions of 91.203 subpart A and 2. And again, they're just jumping us all around the code federal regulations. The next slide, I have that 91.203, which is summarized in plain English, says you need to have in the U.S., a registration certificate issued to the owner for the operation of the United States and continues on with the laws of a foreign country if it applies. So the very last slide here, Ken, and then we'll open it up for discussion is, does the Mavic Mini need to be registered? For hobby use, no, it does not if you're going to be under Part 101. However, you still have to abide by hobbyist rules. You don't have to register but there's still plenty of rules to follow. And this is the interesting thing that I don't know a lot of people thought of. If you wish to use it for commercial use under part 107, you would still need to register it. You need to register it because you're a commercial operator as we just read in the 107 regs. So is it the outlaw drone? No. Is it gonna be something super fun, uh, a great introductory price to try to get more people involved and hopefully stepping up their, their drone game in the future? absolutely with that so if the fa going to change rules and regulations to get under 250 i don't know that answer i would argue they're probably going to look at it very closely because this will be the first mass produced drone that's underneath that 250 grand regulation by the, by uh, the way else is just uh, small stuff your your uh, your connection is is lacking i don't know if you can get closer to your router or whatever but you're you're yes, breaking up you're in a hotel right 
Yeah, sorry. You, are you using the hotel Wi-Fi? Because I did. Yeah, sorry, oh, it's sorry, terrible. Sorry. It's terrible. Can, but can I can I ask a, a question apropos to what you just said? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so so um so what about a situation where you are uh, part 107 pilot and you do part 107 work, you know, for hire or whatever, but then you also fly as a hot, does, are you immediately tied to, for example, for me, I, I kind of was under the impression that if I never use this on anything, but just fun family outings, I didn't have to register this drone or is it immediately because I passed my part 107 thanks to remote pilot mm -hmm. 101, by the way. Uh, yes. and, and so I have to register every drone I fly. No, that, that's, that's not entirely the case. It's the use of the drone. Okay. It's not because Kelly is a Part 107 pilot. It's how do I wish to use this drone? The same is true in manned aircraft. I have commercial aircraft, and then I have my fun stuff. I take the family flying in. The J, J Cub or the, um, the Cub, right? Exactly. Now you're talking. Right. Here, here's, so, here's what I want to know. I, I want to know, um, is the FAA going to go after people because um somebody made a really good point and they they asked me this question maybe you can uh, answer it how will the fa and 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 granted the only way the fa ever knows about any violations is because someone reported it they don't have a police right. system they don't there's no fa police um so how will the fa know which drone you're using in in in, in in which case, you know what I mean? You're, yeah, you're, you're talking about if I didn't register, am I following the hobbyist rules? Is what you're trying right. to infer? Yeah. You're trying yeah. to say? Yep. You're exactly right. Unless somebody reports it, unless you've registered the serial number for a rebate or a warranty or something like that, it will be very hard to actually track that. Now, with the advent of ADSB technology and some other things, that, that can change. You're right. Right now, it would be uh, very hard to tell who crashed that drone if it's not registered. Yeah, I, th I think, again, we have to reiterate that this is not the outlaw drone because I think people are buying this thinking they can fly at night. They can fly, they can fly it into a jet engine. Everything will be all right. But uh, no, that's absolutely not the case. Correct. And, and, and this goes for toy drones as well. You, you, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's anything under that 250. And again, I love Kelly's point earlier of that's it's 250 of your takeoff weight. Just because you took it out of the box at 248, 249 grams, you had the stickers, you had the prop guards, you had the well, that was, card. Yeah, that was Sean, uh, Sean Oz, you know, who spoke at Spin Up as well. That was his question was as soon as you had the prop guards, if that puts it, it over. Now, now, a question for you there. If you fly, because the only time I would put the prop guards on would be to fly indoors. Do you, right. uh, if, if I only flew it indoors with the prop guards where it would be over that 250 gram theoretically, um, then, then do I have to register it? Jeez, what? it's a, it's a great point. Yeah, you're operating over that 250 in that instance. If something happened at the same time indoors, you're not technically in the national airspace system. Ah. I'm in my house. Right, right. Right. So there's, there, there's some debates right there that can be had, uh, indoors things like part 107 and that sort of stuff i'm not in the airspace system it's it's different you're in the comfort of your home um jason are you in a in a, a larger city where you have uh 4g because the hotel wi-fi just ain't cutting it yeah you yep. want me to do that can, I, might, can we better, might do better off the wi-fi yeah on, can on we switch 4G. can we switch or do i need to call you back um i don't know if i can switch but can you 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 may, can we turn video off and try that does that help no you're too good looking to turn the video off let me see. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, uh, and this is from Marcus Glass. He has a very good question. Um, yes. There was an incident where a guy who uh, who had a video, an aerial video business, was asked by the local sheriff to help find a missing boy, and this was at oh. night. Um, and they didn't have time to get a waiver. Can you defer to the local authorities in that way? I think I know the answer to this already. Um, he, he asked, was an FAA waiver needed to fly in an emergency at night? Um, wow. You so know, you have to remember the the sheriff, I'm sure they're, they're great people. They mean well, but they don't control 
the airspace here. Right. Now, at the same time, we work with a lot of police units. They're not always held to Part 107 regulations. They operate under, you know, a, a, an LOA, a letter of authorization or, or an agreement with the FAA. Typically, uh, they'll set those up to operate outside of Part 107 and have to avoid the waiver process. It's it's possible he could have operated under their LOA if they had one, but but we don't know. But no, it's it's tough to piggyback um, on that sort of stuff. Right. I mean, because uh, if so you're, you, you know, if you're out, if I was so in that situation, there's a crying parent yeah. here and I had the, yeah. the means to help find the kid, I would do it, you know, damn the absolutely. consequences. I absolutely would do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's going to go after you in that situation unless unless you run into a helicopter that's also searching. Right. That's where it gets tenuous is, is 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 if your heart's in the right place, you've also got to have your head in the right place. You know. Yeah, but but honestly, too, it it opens up that law enforcement department to some liability. Think about when you hire someone to come cut down trees in your yard. What's the first thing you ask? Are you licensed and insured? Yeah. Right. That law enforcement person hires this kid who schmucks it into a building <laughs> and isn't licensed or insured is going to be a big liability because it's going to fall in the department. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. Right. Well, um, well uh, if, if anybody's watching and they would like to uh, go to remotepilot101.com to learn all they need to know for their their tests uh and and it's not just part 107 that you offer what are, what are the kinds of stuff do you offer there sure so we do everything from part 107 test prep all the way through manned aviation it's your dream to be an airline pilot one day that's actually how we got our start we're using drones in a cinematic way to showcase our manned aviation videos and that's how remote pilot 101 kind of grew out of that uh, as a product so everything from drones to an airline pilot I always say we can fulfill uh, all those dreams and produce all that knowledge uh, you need for those FAA exams. And if you want to, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and if, if, uh, if, if you're doubting or if you're wondering, you know, I've heard several people at SpinUp talk about wanting to get their Part 107. Uh, it, it makes a huge difference if you take this course versus just try to study from a book. It, it just really, it's so much easier to comprehend, so much easier to understand, and it's for life. Once you've paid for it, right, Jason, you, you, you yes, basically right. get the course for all your renewals, all your updates, any laws that change. I, I love yes. just watching your videos to learn new stuff so that I can right. be Mr. Smarty Pants. That's what I was going to yes. say. You know, I am not the best at retaining information, but I it's it's so good to be able to know yeah, I'm not going to remember every little thing, and I'm a poor learner, but the way you do it with videos, uh, it sure. really kind of sticks the way you do it. And if you I would like do. to uh, be in the remotepilot101.com family, you can join up right now and use Heron18, that's H-E-R-O-N-18, and get a, a 150% discount. Is that right? You actually pay people to join. I, I send them checks. That's yeah, okay. It works. No, it's actually, it's 30% <laughs> off. Too, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, well, I'll do that deal. But it's uh, Heron18, you get 30% off. And uh, what what kind of updates are, are coming down the pike? Because you are updating this thing all the time with all the new laws. Well, yeah, so, some, some big stuff. March, uh, roughly, we should have a full... A revamp of the initial course and the recurrent course. I never want the course to fall behind where you look and go, wow, I met Jason in person. He looks a lot older than he did those <laughs> videos I watched. They must be five years old, right? I'm not aging as well as Ken. You know, I don't have that that, that silver crown uh, just yet of hair. So it's uh, it's not it's not looking as good. So I want to, we're going to continue to update all those. Also, um, Jeff alluded to it a little bit earlier about the possibility of a hobbyist test. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you and break the news for you. The hobbyist test is a real thing, uh, and we've been consulting with the FAA uh, to bring that to fruition as well. And hopefully I'll be back on in the future sharing more about that before that comes out. But that is a very, very real thing that's going to okay. happen. Once again, just for all the people who are excited over the Mavic Mini, not because it's an awesome drone, not because it has a 2.7K video, uh, but for the outlaw aspect... Uh, sorry to put the kibosh on that. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. You're not, not going to be an outlaw. And, and at the end not of the, the day, world. at the end of the day, there's lots of other drones that are under the weight, right? I mean, this isn't yes. th that aspect isn't new. The difference is the GPS and the functionality of this is a lot better than most of those drones at that lighter weight. But there's been yes. plenty of plenty of them like that already, right? There's already so so well, if you can't fly your SEMA F5 uh, X5C um, into you know commercially or or around an airport or any of those other things you can't do it with the mavic mini 
you're exactly right. The, the big difference, too, is DJI is going to have market share of the 250 gram and less market on November 11th, basically, when this thing ships. Yeah. So, is, that, is that why they did this? I have a little bit of insight, only because I've read some of the press brief stuff. Um, and it's it's really just to open this up, open up drones. And I think it's a good thing, honestly. Open up to the drones to people that maybe were intimidated to use one before. I mean, this is really, it really is very unintimidating. It's very cute. It's very, it, it, I was telling, I don't know if Jason, you were on when I was saying this earlier. I actually nicked my finger with it. And it's designed with these little, um, you know, these Props are kind of like the Paradonafi. They don't hurt. You know, it's it's a very – you'd really have to do something uh, in, very intentional to hurt anybody with this thing because so it the, is so lightweight. So There's the no only mask. thing that uh, will get hurt will be your wallet as it is $400. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. Awesome. That is true. Well, Jason, thanks again. We appreciate it. Yes, All the work and, and your time appreciate for being on today. Thanks, thanks we'll man. You appreciate Thank it. You. Have All fun. Right. All right. Thanks. See you all. I have a challenge for you. Yes, what is it? Fly it right there in your house. <laughs> okay. Right now, live. All right, Do it. all right. And now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty stable inside. Now, it does. It, it has uh, downward-facing uh, sensors. Yeah, yeah, watch. I put my hand under it. It goes up. You see Look it at going that. Up. It's not that loud. No, it's not loud at all. It's way, way quieter than... Uh, than the air quieter than than um the mavic air spark or the mavic air the mavic air is one of the loudest actually freaking noisy that thing yeah but and i'm doing it without i'm doing it without the phone this is just the remote look at that i'm not using the app or anything i just turned it on but yeah i mean it's it's super steady and that's that's just the vision sensor holding it in place what does it uh have let me me get it over by the mic so you can hear it it doesn't have uh what kind of modes does it have it'll do orbits and things like that so it has. Uh, I'm getting the impression you didn't watch my video, Ken. Uh, no, I did, but I'm I'm audience. asking a rhetorical question for those yeah, who didn't. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so so <laughs> it has. Um, it will do uh, rocket. It will do orbit. It will do uh, helix, and it will do. Um, what's the fourth one? Uh, Drony. So it has those four. It doesn't do follow me. It won't. It won't. You you can you can track yourself, and it'll do the rocket. You know you're familiar with that, right? Yeah. But it won't. It won't follow you like on a skateboard or anything like that. It doesn't have the follow me mode. It doesn't have any sensors for obstacle avoidance other than uh, other than the bottom. That's the only place there's a there's downward vision sensors. And th- these front things are not actually uh, anything except. Um, I don't know, air, air intakes maybe, but they're not sensors. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling like you, I, I'm actually a little excited about this because of the 3-axis gimbal. I mean, the Spark footage looks pretty good for a 2-axis. Yeah, but- oh, I, you saw the footage for this, and I was flying it fast. I was flying it hard. I was I was flying it indoors, outdoors. I mean, I've really put this thing through. I, I actually crashed it pretty hard into a wall in uh-huh. my office too. Um, I have footage of that, but um, I, I don't really want to show it. <laughs> it was it was kind of embarrassing. I was like talking to the camera and flying it at the same time, and then I just heard bam, Uh-oh. and and uh, fortunately my camera guy got it. So cool. Well, thanks for uh, sharing that. Yeah, yeah, you asked me to fly a drone, and I'm gonna say no. Of course not. <laughs> what is your favorite ride at Disney World? My favorite ride because it reminds me of you, Ken. Yeah. It's a small world. It just gets stuck in your head. And Ken Heron <laughs> gets stuck in my head all the time. Oh, okay. All right. I'll take it. I, first, I thought, is he insulting me? <laughs> no, 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 that's good. That's good. Yeah. He's such a little guy. Too. Yeah, yeah, I'm teeny tiny compared to you. 